It's been a while. I forget how to do this well. Oh yeah. Just want to take a moment to show you guys <laughs> my son's artwork. <laughs> he started school and it's so cute. I need to go get that. Hey friends, it's Brittany from Green Bee Flowers in Strathroy, Ontario. Um, it's been a hot minute, uh, but I decided that we should probably start documenting our 2022 season. So today, actually what we're doing is we are pre-soaking um, and getting our ranunculus and our anemones uh, ready to go. It is February 1st here. We are in Ontario, Canada. Uh, there is still, I don't know if you guys can see this here, there's still a lot of snow. A lot of snow on the ground here but February 1st also means we need to start thinking about getting the farm uh, up and ready to go what I didn't do for you guys this year was a rundown of all of the seed hauls that I did uh, we spent some money on seed yeah, it's gonna be a good year. Anyways, I uh, wanted to focus today on the ranunculus and anemone corms because I think it's one of the things that, uh, whether you're a home gardener or you're a flower farmer, you have the most questions about getting started because there's this understanding that ranunculus and anemones are one of the more difficult things, my, it's my dog in the background, uh, to do. And I just, I don't think that's the case. Uh, you just have to know kind of what you're doing. So I'll flip the camera around and you, can see how we get things started here. Okay, so I, when we got our tulip bulbs um, in the fall, I kept these, or uh, the bags that they came in because these are just really, really handy. This is, I'm just in my kitchen right now. Um, I filled the whole sink up with like room temperature water. Um, and I'm just inputting the ranunculus and the anemones into these mesh bags. Now, you can also use those mesh bags that you cover your dahlia blooms with. Uh, you can honestly direct put them directly into the water if you have a bowl. The key, of course, is to label. <laughs> because we've all been there and just forgotten. So these here, uh, this bag here is mixed ranunculus from last year because I didn't label them in the gardens. So that's where we are. Uh, so basically, what I'm going to do uh, we have over here about 500 ranunculus um, and these are all labeled so we're going to make sure that these keep the labels. These are from Venort. And then on my kitchen table, oh yeah, see we're also, uh, we're also seed sorting. So right here we've got uh, teddy bear sunflower seeds that are we're going to be sorting. Okay. here. We went in on an order with another flower farmer, so here are my unicorn blooms uh, with the Italian, the Italian ranunculus. So these ones here are focus. There we go. These ones are anemones. Um, we have a whole bunch of like different ranunculus and stuff here too. Also, sorted sweet peas. Most of these came from Florette. Uh, sweet peas that we did. They did actually end up picking up at the end of the summer last year, however, uh, we decided to save a good chunk of them and I don't actually remember if these ones have the perennial sweet peas in them too, but yeah, well, we'll figure it out. So when you get your ranunculus, they should look like this, which is really, really dried out. <laughs> kind of like octopuses, octopi, octopi? Yeah, so they'll be dehydrated at the top, but you can still kind of see there where the new plant is gonna grow. So we're gonna take all these, put them in my bag. If you lose one, sorry. Right. 
make sure that we are labeled. sink is full. Uh, we're going to leave these in here between three to five hours. I'll come in and I'll check back on them in a couple hours to see, uh, but they'll start to plump up, uh, the corms will, and then uh, we will transfer them to soil. And that is the first stage of ranunculus and anemones. Okay, <laughs> so we're now in my basement. Um, this is the room, uh, you can just see behind me, it's just concrete basement, uh, my tiny human is upstairs, where we start all of our seeds. Um, this room is a constant, constant sore uh, in my side, just simply because there's never enough space. Um, we ordered about 12 more new grow lights today, which is great. My husband set up two more shelves, which will give us uh, six shelves each, which should give us, just doing some quick counting here. Uh, about 24 spots for 24 trays per shelf so we can actually put 48 more trays down here so I am working right now on getting the ranunculus and the anemone corms put in basically the, what we do is I use just pull here so I use a 72 uh, slot square square holes uh, for the ranunculus um, I, I filled them fill it up with like a seed starter um, and pro mix mixture. Um, I don't typically like to do just seed starter mostly because the corms don't actually need it. It doesn't, um, it's not like a seed where it needs like to hold on to a ton of water. Um, and I find mixing it with pro mix as well as adding some vermiculite on top helps to keep that moisture in. And it's a little bit better on the budget. Um, seed starter can be expensive, but this way every, ranunculus gets its own hole, uh, which I think is really important, um, so I can keep them segregated just in case we do have like an issue where one gets really soft and moldy, it won't infect the whole tray. I've seen other, done this other years where instead of putting them in individual trays, uh, we've just used the base tray here, um, filled it with dirt and just set the ranunculus and the anemone corms in. But this way I like this, I can label on my side exactly where things are. Uh, we will cover these with um, another seed base um, and we'll leave them down in our seed room for about a week. Uh, it is, I'm gonna say around 65, 62 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit in here. Should probably put an actual uh, thermometer in here, but it is cool. It's not as cold as our cold storage where we keep our Dahlia tubers, uh, but it is definitely cooler than it is on our main floor where we live. Worms soaked at least the first round of corms soaked in our kitchen sink upstairs for let's say about four hours i actually have the next round on the go so i'm going to be doing round two of planting these tonight and now i'm just kind of moving them planting them into the soil so that these can sit here in the dark in the cold for again about a week i'm going to come back and i'll check on them make sure that they're looking okay uh, at which point I will put some more dirt over top just to cover the rest of the uh, the corms uh, because by that point we should be starting to see some sprouts. Uh, you will take anywhere from like 7 to 21 days usually before you start seeing some green coming out of your, uh, your corms. And I do find with regards to ranunculus and anemones, I find anemones to be more apt for, to mold but I don't necessarily find mold to be a bad thing. Uh, we had it last year where most of our ranunculus and our anemones by about week three had like a good solid layer of like disgusting white mold on them, but they had green sprouts coming out. So what we did is we just covered it up with some more soil, uh, pushed them down a little farther and we just rolled with it. We ended up having a beautiful uh, harvest last year or last spring of ranunculus and anemones, which was really good. Um, so I know that that can be something to stress about. Uh, however, I do think that 
mold can be a sign of life both in the soil um, and on the corn. The, the trick is to make sure that the actual the, like ranunculus claw itself, so if I pull out one of the ones that we soaked, right, you, you don't want them to be squishy. Like if you find there's mold growing on them and the entire corn itself is squishy, like this one is still, if I push on it, it's still nice and hard. You can feel like there's there's a lot in there, which is kind of what you want, right? But if this becomes something where it's like slimy and squishy, uh, that is not good and you probably want to dispose of these. So having them in separate trays, in trays, sorry, that have uh, individual squares in them uh, for seeding. I mean, you can try these with soil blocking. This is just one of those ones. We don't soil block here yet. I don't know why. We should. It's just not something we've done yet. Uh, but I find, especially with corms, with bulbs, with dahlias, I always make sure that we are planting those in individual, uh, individual trays, uh, individual uh, pots, so that if there is disease from one, it's not going to then transfer that disease to everything else. So, here we go. Gonna plant the next round. It is, I am talking to you through the shelf. There is a shelf up here. There's a shelf here, this whole unit is a shelf, which is partially why the lighting is so bad. Uh, but I will show you what's going on. So, oh, we label, we label everything. I apologize, we're just gonna roll with this. We already know that on my channel, I just, I need some help with lighting. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, and like, I have one of those like little things that you use for like, you're supposed to use for your TikTok videos, whatever they're called. I don't know where it is. We are, we are low maintenance here at the Green Bee. Anyway, so on this half here, you can see I have already gotten uh, these planted in. I obviously haven't stuck the vermiculite on top yet. I will do that. Um, but on the end of that variety is here. So what I always make sure to do, make sure your tape here lines up with where your variety ends and then your next round of tape needs to line up where the next variety ends. I always make sure I'm labeling every end on the tray. The reason we label the tray and not the actual inside is because I need to be able to put a tray on top of this um, and having popsicle sticks and like markers sticking out is just not helpful in any way shape or form so I stopped doing that ages ago. always want to make sure that you're putting the date right so February 1st is the date so I'm going to make sure that that is labeled on my piece of tape so that we know when these started and I'm not going to be starting I'm not going to be starting all of my ranunculus today um, but I'm going to get a bunch of them started probably about half and then I'll start the remaining half in about two weeks uh, we do this because I like to have flushes available um, Right, we talk a lot about succession planting for every other flower, but succession planting for ranunculus is just as important. It's a really, really, really popular flower around here, um, around Mother's Day. Um, but we also get a lot of very, very warm weather around here in May. Um, and so by succession planting these, Hopefully I will get more blooms over a longer period of time uh, because ranunculus do have a limited amount of blooms that they push out and they are an incredibly popular flower. So we want to make sure that we're extending our harvest period as long, oops, as, long as possible.
Okay everyone, it has been almost two weeks uh, since we uh, pre-soaked and put the ranunculus corms and the anemone corms in their homes. Uh, so today what we're doing is we're going to come down actually and check to see how they're going. Now I was down here last night, um, I've been kind of keeping an eye on them every couple days uh, just to see, you know, to watch things like mold growing. Um, check to make sure that the corms were staying plump um, and all of that kind of stuff but I wanted to show you because we have some signs of life on the ranunculus and I'm so excited. Uh, so first I'm going to show you what you're looking for, uh, the way they should look, what to do if you are starting to see a little bit of that mold uh, start to develop on the top of your ranunculus. It's okay, it's normal, we don't need to worry again as long as they're not squishy then we're fine. Uh, and then the second thing I'm going to tell you about uh, is the different types of ranunculus and anemones that we are going to be growing on the farm this year. Uh, so we're going to go through that step by step. But remember, this is like almost two weeks after that original footage. Um, so some things have changed. And you'll notice the lighting is better uh, because this shelf that I currently have the camera sitting on. Again, we're super high tech here at the Green Bee. Uh, my husband has put up a whole bunch of grow lights. Um, so there are, there's eucalyptus and foxglove and uh, larkspur and um, delphinium all started as well on the shelves underneath. Uh, but that means that you can see my face now. So that's good. <laughs> okay, so there's a few things on this tray. Um, first of all, we did notice that some of our ranunculus were starting to get fuzzy mold. Again, it's not a bad thing, it just means that we need a little bit more ventilation down here. Um, but here, on this ranunculus, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of mold growing there. Um, it's not problematic, so we're kind of just keeping an eye on it, um, covering with a little bit more dirt as needed. But the really exciting thing is right there. So there, right there, that is a sprout. And that is exactly what we're looking for uh, with our ranunculus. So you can see right there, a little nub right there. That is going to be a ranunculus plant. And that at about 10 days to 14 days is what you should be starting to see on your ranunculus corms. Oops. That is a good thing. Uh, the other thing that you want to start seeing on them uh, is roots, which is this one right here. So right, right there. So that one there is starting to develop its root system. That's really important. That also is a good indicator that your ranunculus corms are alive. Okay, so for the remainder of our ranunculus, so we're going to be starting these on Tuesday. Monday is Valentine's Day and we are very busy in the studio on Valentine's Day. We are bringing in a whole bunch of Ontario grown floral because we operate our studio um, year round. Uh, we do wholesale, obviously, from um, as many Canadian growers as possible. So we bring in a, lo a lot of ranunculus um, and anemones from Virgil Greenhouses. We also get things like freesia from Weimar Flowers, which is also in the Niagara region, and a lot of um, uh, tulips right now are starting to come out of Canadian greenhouses as well. So we are able to kind of supplement uh, in the off season with Canadian grown flowers, which I think is a little bit of the challenge always for farmer florists is getting to that point in the winter where like there's nothing and Valentine's Day is such a big holiday for florists. So anything that we can kind of do to, you know, move away from imported flowers as much as possible and to support our Canadian grown economy uh, is, is really, I think, important. Um, and we're lucky too, because being about two and a half hours away from Toronto, you know, my wholesaler is able to bring me like flowers that are super fresh um, and we're moving so many flowers through the studio all the time um, that I just, I feel so, grateful essentially that we're able to kind of keep operating and I think a lot of florists too especially new florists are starting to make conscious choices about uh, what they can do in the off season to kind of minimize the amount of imported flowers that they're bringing in anyways digression from the unicorn group blooms uh, there's there's about 
350 ranunculus here um, and about 250 anemones. Uh, so we'll start with the ranunculus. We have, of course these ones are all the anemones. Okay, so first we have here, uh, we've got Elegance Clementine. Um, I went in on a bulk order with another flower farmer, uh, just kind of to shave on shipping. Um, so she repackaged these uh, some of these for me, which is why they're in paper bags. Um, so Elegance Clementine, uh, so pictures there. We have Rosa Chiaro, Chiaro. I don't know how you pronounce some of these. Very, very beautiful ranunculus. Um, bring in a lot of pinks. I don't know if you noticed that. We sell a lot of pinks here. Uh, then we have a Bianco Stradio. Um, Stratio? Striato? Striato. That sounds less problematic. <laughs> Bianco Striato. Lovely. Then we have. These are also in it. Uh, we have Elegance Viola. Um, so there's 50 corms of these coming in each. And we have Elegance Salmon. So Elegance Salmon is actually one that I sell a lot of in the studio itself. Um, we bring a lot of those in from Virgil. It's one of the ones that they grow. Okay, anemones. I love anemones. So to start, uh, it's some footage from last year's uh, anemone harvest, right? If you go back and watch those videos. Uh, I had a large patch of anemones um, and I didn't know what to do with them very well. Um, they were really stringy and it took a long time for them to get going so their season was very short but now learning so many things and to not make those mistakes again I feel confident in my ability to grow anemones this year and so we have the 2021 anemones they are started downstairs um, and then this year we are bringing in Minstrel Bianco Centro Nero, yep, they're Italian names, uh, basically means black center. Then we have Rosa Shocking, uh, so that's the picture of that one. We have Minstrel Plus Blue, very excited. We also have Minstrel Plus Rarity, mm -hmm. and Minstrel Plus Fuego. Uh, so there is, I believe, one, two, three, four, five. So there's 250 anemone corns here. So on Tuesday, February 15th, nope, yep, Tuesday, February 15th, I will be pre soaking um, anemones and a ranunculus round two. Um, and you will be able, hopefully, if I remember, because uh, to see us put them in the grounds and kind of the care instructions for how we're doing that. We're going to be uh, growing the ranunculus, like I said, in crates, but we are going to be putting them in our backyard again because they are an early crop. I don't want to put them on the acre farms uh, just because the weather in southwestern Ontario can still be problematic up until the middle of March. That is ranunculus and anemones for 2022. So here we go. First YouTube video of 2022. Thank you all for joining us. Um, sorry that it's just been a uh, but I think those of you who've been following us long enough know that my brain just kind of goes. If you liked the video, please subscribe. I hate asking that, but it does mean a lot. Uh, we love kind of documenting our farming process uh, for the community. Um, and I will be updating you guys too as soon as I know for dahlias. This is the next one. Uh, dahlia sales uh, we will be holding on our website uh, after Valentine's Day. So that's also on my list of things to do next week is to deal with the dahlias. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye. <laughs> and this right here, this is a lesson in how not to procrastinate dividing dahlias. I do a uh, video eventually on dividing dahlias, but I just I just wanted to show you the chaos. This is the finished dahlias and like rows of them. So you can see like I'm coming in too, just to double check, make sure things look good. The labels on the front of everything. So I'm gonna be going through this over the next couple weeks and if you're Canadian we will be having Tally Tuber sales. Woo! So many Tally.